the second half. Here comes Good. Good and gonna score the two and one. Full drive inside. Stop. Hang on a pivot. Turn around. Jump shot is good. Jordan Battle with a nice spin move. Kicks it down low. Vardon. Big Maple with the finish. What's up, Black Hoops Nation? It is another episode of Straight Out White Podcast. Got a special guest today. It is T Bird Nation Week, but before we get to that. I got to bring attention to something as we continue to grow here at WAC Hoops Digest. We've established some affiliate partnerships, as you've seen, with Fanatics. We now have MLB Shop, NBA Store, the NFL Shop. Uh, we also have Vegas.com and so forth. I'm going to put some links in the description that you can click on. Get your fan gear, get your stuff. Anything you get, we get a little commission off of, and it helps us bring you better content for our favorite college basketball conference. It helps with our growth. Get your 2022-23 fan gear. Maybe book your trip to Las Vegas for the WAC tournament in March. Or if you're a New Mexico State fan or Abilene Christian fan, you're going to Las Vegas over Thanksgiving weekend. So be sure to book stuff through Vegas.com. Again, links in our description. Now let's get to it. Again, it's T-Bird Nation, hashtag T-Bird Nation week, as we preview one of the new members of the Western Athletic Conference with me today. And I'm going to bring him in right now. Southern Utah men's basketball head coach, Todd Simon. Todd, welcome to the WAC, my friend. Oh, no, it's going to be great. Uh, we're excited to be uh, be a part of this conference. It's going to be an outstanding basketball conference, top to bottom, and uh, we're ready to compete. I, I know that you're not necessarily unfamiliar with the Western Athletic Conference, but what, what, are, what are you kind of looking forward to in this new venture that maybe differs from the big sky a little bit? Yeah, you know, getting some, you know, different cities, different travel, going south instead of north in the winter might not be all that bad in terms of uh, those delays and sitting in the airport. So I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping that Texas weather treats us nice. But, uh, you know, it's exciting, different brand of basketball. Um, just from a, across the board, I mean, you're talking about maybe a different level of athlete, a little different skill. You know, the, the, the Big Sky was very, very much a shooter's league across the board, very old. Um you know, and I think the uh, just as a, as a general rule of thumb, the wax a little bit more you know, of a pressing league and team teams pressure. We have more, you know, a little bit longer at some position, a little quicker, and um, but maybe not quite as perimeter oriented from a from a shooting standpoint. And so it's, it's going to be a different deal. And uh, but we're excited about it. We, you know, we certainly we're going to have um, you know twelve new preps, but uh, folks are going to have new preps with us too, and and a new experience here coming to Cedar. You leave kind of, I, I want to say, one rivalry in terms of, you know, with Weber State and what you've had there in an in-state rivalry. But now you get two, perhaps, I guess, maybe not necessarily rivals per se right now, but it's going to, I feel like it's going to establish into even bigger things with Utah Tech and Utah Valley and I-15. How, do you, how excited are you to be able to play those guys maybe twice every year? Yeah, it's been it's, it's been great, and, and if you've come to the games, watch the games. It's it's a budding rivalry in, in the last couple of years as we played Dixie the last two seasons. Um, great environments. Um, you know, we played UVU the last uh, three or four years and had wonderful crowds there. And so I think it's it's well on its way uh, to becoming a, um, a neat little in-state rivalry. And and uh, you know, I think I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think the the, the the locale and being up and down the 15 will be, will be certainly something that fans can easily hop onto and become a, a pretty good home environment for, for, for our teams. I tried to elaborate a little bit on maybe what fans can, you know, look forward to when they travel to Cedar city to watch their schools play the, the Thunderbirds. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on maybe something, you know, fans can do in Cedar city that will draw them even, you know, into it. When they're, you know, when they want to travel, yeah, it's it's a great destination. Obviously, there's there's a uh, there's some tourism here with the, all the different events. It's a, you know, they they call ourselves a festival city with all this, the stuff that kind of goes on in the summer. But I mean, it's it's year round. It's it's equipped for for people to come in town and and, and have a good good stay and uh, get some good food and, and come watch T Birds and their team play, and so I think uh, I think it's a neat little destination, especially you know where the University of the Parks were right, right nestled in into all these national parks. So it's a it's a pretty unique place in the world, but it's pretty accessible uh, as a kind of a centrally located spot where you can drive to from a lot of places. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. For fans just listening, maybe they didn't read the article yesterday on WackCoopsDigest.com. Bryce Canyon is about a 30-minute drive from Cedar City, Zions National Park. Same thing. If you're a skier or you just want to experience, you know, Utah skiing, Brian Head is right up the street from Cedar City. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that, that's always a great time. And and the snow-capped mountains of those red rocks are pretty amazing. Let's just be real about that. So, good times. I, I want to ask you one last question before we get to your roster and, and kind of the preview of this 2022-23 season. Um, we talked about it when, when he passed away, but – What's it going to be like when you face UTRGV and your friend, your good friend, Lou Hill, like, isn't, isn't there. I mean, I know it's kind of, it's been two years, but still it's like, it doesn't seem like it's real still. And and I'm sure you feel the same way. Yeah. It's going to be emotional. Um, You know, that's a tough one. That's going to be a tough one. You know, it just, he he was very helpful. Um, you know, as a young young coach, kind of breaking in, and then uh, then becoming a head coach. You know, we we talked periodically, and 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 uh, you know, he he was great at um, building people up, and uh, so uh, there's no question it's going to be emotional. You know, the, it was great to see their uh, name in the pavilion down there in his honor, and and uh, you know, those type of things are are really going to be you know fun to see develop. But uh, but yeah, no, it, it was it was it, it's going to be. Uh, it's gonna be a tough one, just just thinking of him. And but uh, you know, he's a, he's a guy that you know you cross paths with in, in your career, and you're really grateful you did. And and um, in, in that that friendship, mentorship, and it was was outstanding. So um, you know, I think about him all the time. You know, really do. And and uh, sitting in his office when I was young, and we're talking about basketball stuff, and and uh, you know how the way of the world works, how he'd run a program, and do these type of things, and and uh, you know, and then applying them you know, 15 years later, it it was, uh, you know, stuff that you remember. So, you know, it will certainly be a memorable trip. Well, let's, let's get to your roster now. I mean, the big news, I guess, is that Tevin Jones is coming back to me. He, he's a whack player of the year candidate. I want to mention, I think it was two years ago, you guys came up to Orem and you kind of beat up on the Wolverines and Tevin went off that night, had a career night there in, in, at the UCCU Center. I'm, I'm, I hate to admit this. I didn't know much about him until that night. And now following him, I, I'm just I'm, – I'm excited to be able to watch this guy multiple times again this season. What, what is it that he does that makes him so special? You know, his, he's, he's got a, a killer mentality. He's a competitor, right? So – he wants to win everything. He wants to win and practice. He's going to hold guys accountable. He's going to raise the intensity level. Um, and, ob- and obviously he's an explosive scorer. I mean, he can go for, you know, 40. And I believe he will in some games this year, the way he's he's preparing. You know, he broke his wrist, cost him the end of the season last year. And it's, it kind of felt like he had some unfinished business. And um, and so he's, he's kind of attacked the offseason, added layers of, of, of muscle and, and – really grown his game and, and, and it's showing right now. You know, yesterday he made a couple shots on guys and I just told the defender, I said, if the only thing you can do is work on growing six more inches tonight and then maybe you'll be able to contest that shot because there's nothing you can do. And and he's got that ability to make those type of shots. Talk about, I, I guess, maybe just the, the leadership too. I mean, he's a veteran for you. He's been around. He's played a lot of games for you. I mean, you, you mentioned it, the broken wrist at the end of the season where he missed – you know, the Big Sky Tournament, I, I just, like, how nice is it to have that veteran leadership, especially in a, in a time now where guys are just bolting for other programs or leaving after a year or two and, and so forth, to have him back with that leadership? Yeah, no, it's, it's great. We've, we've been fortunate. We had two two guys return for their COVID fifth year last season, and we had four more this season that uh, said, hey, we're going to take advantage of this. And, and, and you know, maybe the grass isn't greener on the other side, and they wanted, wanted to stay. And, and um, you know, for us, we're really proud of that. You know, that that's not the new normal. And uh, for guys to be loyal to the program and, and, and feel like they're getting better. I think if people are feeling like they're getting better, they're getting challenged, and you're part of a great culture and, 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 and people that uh, – you know, find joy in playing with one another and being around each other. I think it, I think that's 
that's a testament to the players that we brought in the program because they're they're they are great individuals and they're great teammates and and they, and they have got a shared goal. You know, we, we've we've won a lot the last two years and 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 got a regular season title and and doing done all those all of, all of those things. But now it's time to go to the tournament. And I think we've got a shared goal in that. You talked about bringing back uh, four guys. Myzen, I, I want to say you, you may have to pronounce it for me. Myzen, is that is that correct? Uh, Mazen. Mazen, Falzette, um, Jason Spurgeon. You even got your sixth man back. I, I just – Harrison Butler's back. I just talk to talk to me about that uniqueness of having so many guys return. You talked about it where some guys just think the grass is always greener with, with taking that fifth year and going somewhere else or, you know, after one year of maybe a success at a, at a mid-major, they try to go see if the grass is greener at a power six or something like that. But – how unique is it to have these guys who, I mean, you get three starters, obviously, with Tevian, Mazin, and Jason, and then you get your sixth man, Harrison Butler. I mean, that, that's that got to be a comforting feeling to know you have all that experience who have played for you, plus the leadership with the new guys you're bringing in this year. Yeah, no, it's exciting. And, and you know, Harrison's been a four-year starter, even the – you know, scorebook doesn't say it. You know, he's a thousand point guy and second all time lead rebounder in our school. And, and, uh, but he's just made so right. I mean, he's one of those guys I say has such been critical to all of our success because he's said, Hey, you know, I'll come off the bench. I don't care. I just want to win. And, 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 uh, and we move him all over the floor. And a guy like Mason Fawcett, who's, you know, been on all league teams and, 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 you know, is going to, you know, be, has been absolutely a legendary career here. And, and um, Jason Spurgeon now will be in year three after, a, you know, basically a, um, essentially a redshirt freshman year. And then last year jumping on the scene and becoming one of our better players at the, at the five spot. And his progression continues to grow as he's put on muscle and, and gotten bigger and faster and stronger. So, you know, we'll just assimilate uh, a new backcourt. Um, D Barnes returns, you know, and we had three guys redshirting last year that'll, um, help us across the roster, but uh, we bring in a lot of guards, and uh, so we have a good, healthy, open competition for those spots to, to kind of see how how that'll shape up. Yeah, I, I I was looking at the roster. I'm thinking there's a ton of guards here. I'm kind of curious who you see. You know, I don't know if you can fill the void left by you know a, a John Knight the third or um, Dre Marin. I mean, how how do you see that playing out? You said you, there's a lot of competition in, in practice and stuff to figure that out but those are two guys that were I mean basically two of your top three leading scorers how, how do you how do you fill that void on a, on a squad that had so much success with those guys running the floor for you yeah you know Dre felt you know for five years was such a such a high minutes guy and and um and JK really for three years I mean these guys are um Two of the greatest guards to play at the school, and, and so you don't just replace those overnight. But we, we, it's a different look, you know. I think we have a different look. We, we've been really excited about the summer and the, and the practice because we feel like every day it's someone new that's kind of stepping up, and we got some, we got some experience back there, and, you know. And, and Cam Healy's in his fifth year. Um, he scored forty in the MAC. He scored forty at Albany. I mean, he's 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 got thirteen hundred points. So this isn't new to him. Um, you know, Felix Lamedes and is, is five years removed from 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 his college start date. And D Barnes is back. Amon Anderson redshirt last year was a transfer from uh, Northridge, who we were really high on, that just got hurt last season. And um, Martell Martel Williams is another one that got hurt last year and medically redshirted. You know, so they got some more sneaky experience. Ding Dutt um, was a Juke All American and, and and on a talented Wyoming team didn't get a lot of time. And we think we can. You know, you can take advantage of him here and Drake Allen, another um, Juco All American, won a lot of games. You know, very talented. So, and Zion Young's a sniper, is at nine threes in a game. So, I mean, it's a very deep group that, uh, and the way we play, you know, we're, we're very, um, it's cliche to say, but we're essentially very positionless, one through four. And um, we're going to roll a lot of lineups that, um, you know, people are going to have to match to us uh, or risk us making a lot of threes. So, um, you know, everybody in our roster now can shoot one through fifteen, and uh, so it's going to be it's going to be an interesting deal if uh, and put some pressure on some defenses. Do you did you recruit that to fit the whack? I mean, did you did you know that you were going to go into the whack, and did you f recruit that way to fit the whack? Because I mean, I feel like 
the WAC is kind of getting to that where it's a guard heavy league or one through four guards can shoot it, can light it up. Um, you know, we, we've had we've been, the WAC's been blessed with some really good big men the last couple of years with Fardos Amac and Gorjak Gak at CBU and uh, Ash Mitborn at, at GCU is one year there. I mean, it, it, did you see that when you when you started putting together the pieces for the WAC that, okay, this team is loaded with guards, this team's loaded with guards and so forth that you kind of had to have that depth and that experience on your guard line? Yeah, no, I think it, it I think it's a reality of, of um, you know, we, we go through it and we do a depth chart for every team in the league and kind of see how teams are built and how we're going to attack them. And, and you know, we do, we've, we've done all that pre-work to kind of see how we need to build the roster. And, but on the flip side of it, we've, we've had success with um, a lot of shooting, a lot of perimeter oriented basketball. You know, we like to, uh, you know, we run a lot of NBA stuff and, um, you know, to run a lot of actions and, and get an open shot and not be able to make it is frustrating. And so um, we've really tried to build our roster and engineer it in a, in a way that, you know, guys can be put on islands and it's going to be really hard to help. And if we, and people make the help, we make the simple play and, and we're hoping that, uh, you know, those threes pile up and, and, and we, our tempo over the course of a game causes some problems. Um, and, uh, you know, and then that, so it's just a, a little bit different the way, the way we were doing it. And, um, but I think it does fit the league a little bit. We're going to be a little bit um, bigger at the guard line. You know, we've signed a lot of guys, you know, between six three and six five at those guard spots, and and uh, you know, so it'll, it'll hopefully uh, you know fit what we're doing schematically. I want to ask you outside of Tevian, who is one of maybe the the more athletic guards on your roster that will kind of have that John Knight the third bounce? I mean, we saw that guy throw down some pretty gnarly dunks in his career at Southern Utah. So I'm very curious if you could throw out a name that might. Give us those same gnarly dunks outside of Tevian Jones. Yeah, uh, you know, he's special. Um, you know, that's a top 1% guy. You know, it's going to be hard to replace that level of athleticism. But, um, you know, Drake Allen's explosive. You, you know, I think even getting in, in the strength conditioning and, and doing all the stuff he's doing now, he's he's proven to be very, very explosive. Well, end line to end line for us. Um, you know, we've got a couple other guys. Martel Williams can get up above the rim, and he's he's a physical specimen in the way he plays. And and Harrison Butler is kind. Of, we've kind of played him as a as a small ball four or five last few years. We've we've kind of taken him back to more of a fr his freshman frame, and um, gonna make him more perimeter oriented. And so his explosion is 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 kind of back, and and uh, so I think he'll play above the rim as well this year. I like it. I like it. I'm just, I'm just picturing you, John Knight, the third one handed, you know, windmill dunk or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Just, it was fun to watch that guy play. So I was curious about your, your thoughts on that. Uh, switching, switching some, the topic a little bit here, uh, you know, first year in the WAC and you get this new seating system that they put in place for uh, the WAC tournament where, you know, they're trying to influence teams to, to build out a, a better non-conference schedule. Uh, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? And, and how has that impacted this, the non-conference schedule you're, you've been trying to put together this season? Yeah, for us, unfortunately, it's a little bit late. Um, you know, we probably would have did things differently, um, you know, to cater to it. We're always going to have a tough non-conference schedule, but, you, but the reality is you need to get wins in order to get those rewards and those penalties hurt you, you know, so – um, we love to play Canada. We've got Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico, and in some difficult places, hard to win at the pit, obviously hard to win at Kansas. And, you know, and it, it, we will have to go to the drawing, drawing board a little bit because I don't know if the system incentivizes teams to, to take a loss at, at Allen Fieldhouse, you know, whereas maybe another team is buying a home game and taking a reward. You know, that's a swing in the standings for those decisions. Um, and, you know, so we've, we've got to probably – readjust that a little bit because you're going to want to get as many neutral and home games as you can to pile up um, rewards under this system and uh, and try to avoid as many, um, you know, uh, you know, losses as you can. Um, so that, I think that's the the, the, the moral of the story, uh, but we, we'll be fine. You know, I think it's going to be good. We're going to always play a couple teams and, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a league that, is going to be a one bid league more than likely. And we've got to be really good at the end and be able to, um, 
the still going to reward teams to play good basketball and, and are peaking at the end of the season, which we 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 try to do. You get to go to Hawaii this year, though. I mean, how excited are you to to go to to the North Shore Classic? Uh, you get Texas State, and then you might get an old Big Sky phone, Sac State, depending on how things play out. But but how excited are you get to to travel to Hawaii this season in the non conference schedule? Yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. You know, that'll be a good trip for us, and and um, you know we've got a lot of ties here in our community to, to Hawaii, so I think it'll be great for for them and. And uh, to see a couple of good friends, or Coach Gennad and uh, Coach Patrick, are, are two two very good friends. So it'll be great to catch up with them and you know see how their their programs are developing and all that good stuff. And uh, um, we, we uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think this is going to be a fantastic uh, you know schedule. We got we have that. We also have a neutral site game with Cal State Fullerton, which will be uh, the undercard to a uh, Creighton, B, uh, Creighton BYU game at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, which will be, you know, just more, more as many of these events that we can kind of get uh, exposure for the program, kind of raise our level. That's what we're always looking for. I want to I want to ask you about um, starting off with a pit in Albuquerque. I mean, that, like you mentioned already, that's not an easy place to play. Richard Patino has, you know, those guys that are going to be a little bit better this year than they were last year. I mean, how how excited for you are in that challenge to start off this 2022-23 season? Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that's a uh, um, you know I'm owing one there. So you always want to uh, you know want to try to get back down down there, try to get a W. But uh, they're going to be talented this year. I mean, obviously they have a phenomenal backcourt back. Uh, Coach Patino does a great job. Uh, it, it's it's uh, you can kind of see the program's kind of getting getting some life back and people are excited and and um so so anytime you know you hope that place is packed i hope game one you know uh, i think for our student athletes to, to you know experience some of these very cool college environments is only going to be a good thing and uh you know to go down there and allen field house i mean you're you're, you're putting you're putting our guys in a hostile environment because uh that's what they're going to remember, you know, 40 years from now, Hey, if we, you know, you, you, you win one of these games, or you compete, it goes down the wire or whatever it may be the case. Those are fun experiences and they make you better as a team. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to play the long game. One last question here for you, Todd. I want to ask you, is there anybody outside of Utah tech and, and Utah Valley that you're most looking forward to in, in playing in, in conference play when, when it begins in late December, or early January? Yeah, that's a good. That's a great question. Uh, I mean, you always got to go to the top. I mean, New Mexico State has has the crown right now. They got the they, they're the, they're the ones that, that got the tournament. So you want to play you want to play those teams. You know, I'm excited to, to play these new challenges. Um, but I think they're all. I mean, I, I see the beauty in all these teams. It's it's a it's a fun game prep. You know, it's like uh, Christmas morning. Me and the staff already talking about. You know and already watching synergy on these opponents talking about the different things they do. I mean, this is the fun part of the job. So um, I can't wait to kind of just, just line ours up against theirs and, and, and see who's better in those 40 minutes. Cause uh, you know, that's, and it's a new challenge every night now. So there's nobody really on our schedule that we've, we've played other than, you know, say for uh, NAU and Idaho state currently that, that we were really familiar with. So it's going to be 30 games of uh, teams we're unfamiliar with. So it's going to be a good coaching challenge. I like it. I like it. Southern Utah heads, men's basketball head coach, Todd Simon, joining me today on the Straight Away podcast. Todd, I appreciate the time. I appreciate the opportunity to talk again. Uh, you know, and, and it's under better circumstances this time than it was, you know, the last time we spoke. But uh, looking forward to the Thunderbirds and, and, you know, covering you guys in the WAC. And, and I'm excited for what you guys bring. Like you said, the, the success you've had in the big sky recently. And under you, since you've been in Cedar City, I mean, it's people shouldn't underestimate SUU, that's for sure. So I appreciate the time. No, thanks for having me. And uh, hey, that's part of uh, being a T bird. We like that. We lo- like being the underdog. So we'll, we'll, we'll gladly accept that role. Wack Hoops Nation, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and continue to check out wackhoopsdigest.com as we bring you hashtag T Bird Nation Week. We'll see you all in the next episode of Straight Outta Whack Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Straight Outta Whack Podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode.
Remember to follow us on Twitter at Whack Hoops Digest and Facebook under Whack Hoops Digest for all your Whack Hoops news and information.